Greetings. Today is Friday, June 28, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 6 a.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring Invest 95, which is near being classified as the second tropical depression of the season. Additionally, we are closely monitoring the evolution of Invest 94, which could become a tropical depression or tropical storm as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually moves towards Veracruz and Tamaulipas, where it could also arrive as a tropical cyclone. Furthermore, the National Hurricane Center has marked another area with development potential that will have a similar trajectory to Invest 95, moving entirely westward, eventually reaching the Eastern Caribbean. In this image, you can see the perspective of the tropics from the National Hurricane Center at 2 a.m., maintaining a 30% chance of tropical depression development related to Invest 94. Therefore, residents of Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, Veracruz, and Tamaulipas should be very attentive to its evolution. On the other hand, the National Hurricane Center continues to increase the development chances of Invest 95, which currently has an 80% chance of developing into a tropical depression in the next 48 hours. It is important for residents of the Lesser Antilles, particularly the islands towards the central and southern regions, to be very attentive, as it seems it could arrive as a hurricane in this region during Monday hours. It will eventually continue on a trajectory south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, but close enough for the Dominican Republic. Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba to continue monitoring its evolution. We cannot rule out the possibility of it moving towards Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula. The third tropical wave is located quite south of the Cape Verde Islands, currently having a 20% chance of development as it moves west-northwest. It could eventually reach the Caribbean region as a tropical depression or tropical storm. Let's briefly talk about Invest 94. In the infrared satellite image, it looks much more organized this morning, with the development of some thunderstorms near the wave axis. Although it is still affected by westerly wind shear, it is projected that this tropical wave will amplify as it moves over Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula between Friday night and Sunday morning. Here you can see the trajectories of the specialized models. It is generally expected to reach the Quintana Roo region in the early morning hours of Friday, then continue northwest and reach the Gulf of Mexico waters where it could go through a reorganization process before moving towards Tamaulipas or Veracruz. Intensity models project it could arrive as a tropical storm in Veracruz or Tamaulipas. For the Yucatan Peninsula, it seems it will arrive as a tropical wave or perhaps a tropical depression, regardless of whether it develops before reaching Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. Torrential rains are expected over the next two to three days, and some tropical storm force wind gusts could affect coastal areas of Quintana Roo and Yucatan. In the video I recorded yesterday, we talked about the accumulated rainfall estimates expected for these areas, including Veracruz, Tamaulipas, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, and the Central America region related to a Central American gyre. Now let's talk about Invest 95, which represents a major threat as it could become the first hurricane of the season. This tropical wave looks very impressive in infrared satellite images and is near being classified as a tropical depression. It is projected to become tropical storm barrel and potentially hurricane barrel when it approaches the Lesser Antilles during the night hours of Sunday or Monday morning. The probability of it affecting the southern half of the Lesser Antilles continues to increase, so residents should start making preparations. In terms of trajectory, there have not been significant changes. There is a good consensus on a generally west or west-northwest movement, reaching the Lesser Antilles and eventually moving over the Caribbean seawaters. It is projected to pass about 250 to 300 miles south of Puerto Rico, and about 200 to 250 kilometers south of the Dominican Republic. Although we are confident it will stay south of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, our followers in the Dominican Republic and Haiti should stay alert for any changes, as any deviation northwards could put them at higher risk. However, the high pressure will be very strong so the chances of it gaining much latitude are low. Currently, the highest risk of direct impact seems to be for eastern Cuba, Jamaica, and then Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula. Still, there is a lot of uncertainty beyond five days in this forecast. In terms of intensity, we also see a better consensus. Models continue to project it will continue strengthening for at least the next four to five days, with consensus that it will reach the Lesser Antilles as a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane, although we cannot rule out it arriving stronger as a Category 3 hurricane. So, compared to the trajectory forecast, there is still uncertainty about how strong it will become before reaching the Caribbean. We know the conditions in this area can be quite favorable for at least gradual strengthening over the next three days. Then, as it reaches the Eastern Caribbean region, conditions may become less favorable for strengthening, which is definitely good news for Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and Central America. However, this is a long-term forecast, and stay vigilant for changes in projections. Let's briefly look at the latest model projections. Here we have the American GFS model. During Friday night hours, it potentially has a tow. 
Tropical depression related to invest 94 crossing over northern Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula to eventually reach Gulf of Mexico waters in the early morning hours of Sunday. Additionally, here we have potentially a hurricane or hurricane barrel approaching the Lesser Antilles related to Invest 95. Then the GFS model projects a tropical storm could develop in the southern Gulf of Mexico waters. Perhaps tropical storm Chris, while we have hurricane barrel passing over the Lesser Antilles during Monday morning hours. This projection has been very consistent not only in the GFS model but in other models as well. So there is a high probability it will fulfill at least the forecast for the next three to four days. Meanwhile, the GFS model projects Invest 94 will reach northern Veracruz and southern Tamaulipas during Sunday night hours. For Tuesday and Wednesday, see that the GFS model has a more northern trajectory than it showed a few days ago, still passing south of Puerto Rico but leaving some indirect effects and passing dangerously close to the Dominican Republic and Haiti by Wednesday morning. It also develops another tropical storm associated with the next tropical wave leaving Africa. It seems it would also impact the southern Lesser Antilles region. And during Wednesday afternoon, see it significantly weakens what could potentially be tropical storm barrel as it approaches Jamaica and Cuba. This is potentially due to wind shear that could affect both disturbances from mid next week. On the other hand, let's see the European model projection, which actually looks quite similar, at least regarding Invest 94. During Friday night hours, it has a strong low pressure, possibly a tropical depression, entering over Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula, eventually moving towards Gulf of Mexico waters where it could reorganize into a tropical depression or tropical storm by Saturday night. On the other hand, we also see here potentially a Category 1 hurricane related to Invest 95 approaching the Lesser Antilles. In this case, the European model has a tropical storm or moving towards the east of Veracruz and Tamaulipas as a tropical storm entering eastern Mexico by Sunday night. The potential hurricane barrel. See that the European model agrees with the GFS model in that it should pass through the region during Monday morning hours as a Category 1 hurricane. Then, in the medium and long term, passing south of Puerto Rico, south of the Dominican Republic, and approaching dangerously close to Jamaica. Here we see a notable difference with the GFS model, as it has a more southern trajectory, eventually reaching northern Nicaragua and Honduras. When we compare this, it is a very notable difference because the American model has this potential cyclone over Cuba or Jamaica, while the European model has it over Central America. So, as I said, we are very confident in the trajectory for at least the next four days, but there is a lot of long-term uncertainty, especially with the intensity forecast. In terms of probability, see that different model members have a lot of consistency that it should move over the Lesser Antilles arc, particularly between Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, where in my opinion they should already start considering that it is very likely that a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane will affect them during Monday hours. Also, in green, See that there is a lot of consistency in it remaining about 250 to 300 miles south of Puerto Rico, so the risk for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands is quite low. Although probabilities favor a trajectory south of the Dominican Republic, I ask that you remain attentive to any changes in the long-term forecast. We really don't know with certainty where it might head. But this includes eastern Cuba, Jamaica, or even Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula by the end of next week. We will have many days to observe what will happen when it moves through this region. This morning, we really don't have consensus. Well, that's all for this morning's update. In the afternoon or evening, I will record new videos to provide updated information. It is important that you check if you are subscribed to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video to the red button that says subscribe, click it, and then click the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent Friday, and please stay tuned to Hurricane Info. Goodbye.